Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play The Raven, Legacy of the Master Thief. When we last left off, we managed to get into the cargo hold, and had talked to the prisoner, and recovered the bullet. Let's look at the toolbox once more. There might be something useful. I've got the screwdriver. That's all I need. Fair enough. Is there anything else that we can look at down here? Probably not. We could look at the trunk again, I, I imagine. Let's have another look. There we go. Let's examine it. Somebody put the trunk back on the shelf. I can't tell whether it was our young friend or someone else. Hmm. And there's nothing else here we can actually... Oh, we could examine the crate. Why not? I could take one of the saws with me as a souvenir. On the other hand, it'd remind me of my bump and of my rather inelegant escape. Fair enough. Let's, uh, let's not take a saw with us. Also, we can examine the bullet. We can examine the screwdriver. A well-used screwdriver from the toolbox. I don't see anything special. Well, it certainly helped you. Now, if I remember, we have to walk a certain direction to get the... to get out of this area. Was that it? Look at the wire. This piece of wire held the lid of the toolbox closed. The wire is quite strong, but flexible all the same. That's going to be useful. We're actually going to be using that wire. That is, in fact, not the way out. We have to walk over here. There is a way to get out of this room, and I will figure it out. We're not spending the rest of the Let's Play stuck in this room because of the slightly awkward camera angles. There we go, we're out. Hooray! Let's leave, shall we? Let's hope Constable Oliver's not up there waiting for us. That would be awkward. That would be very awkward indeed. He's going to be waiting for it. Yep. Hello. That takes the biscuit. I noticed that the door was unguarded. I just wanted to make sure that everything was all right. Mm. Tell it to Legrand. He's expressly forbidden anyone to speak to the witness before he does. Okay. Uh, you were not paying attention. That's a good counter. All right. Let's go to Legrand and tell him what happened. Okay. You fell asleep, and then you left the door unguarded. Yeah. Well, are we going? Hmm? Uh, no, but don't try it again. Of course not. Okay. Yeah. I think we got away with that. But I don't think we're going to be allowed back in there. Yep. It's not even presented as an option anymore. So we are not going to be allowed to go back in there. However, we do in fact have what we need. We have the, uh, we have the wire and the bullet. And that's what we really wanted. We wanted the bullet so we can compare it with the bullet that, um, Gebhardt got from the Baroness. The one that she was shot with. And we want the wire so that we can get to the place where we'll actually do that. Because we're going to do a bit of lock picking. And this in itself is a small mini game. The lock isn't especially secure. I should be able to open it with the wire from the cargo hold. Now, how this works is. You see that? What you do is you basically, you can raise or lower the wire and then drag it along like that. And we want to get all the tumblers so that they are all sort of level. The only downside is we can't do it when it's in the lock because we don't have access to it. So what we need to do is we need to raise that a little more, like say that. It's a very um, flexible piece of wire, this. Okay, that might be sufficient. No, a little lower, I think. A tiny bit lower. There we go. 
tiny bit lower. There we go. Mm. A little lower still. A little lower. Like that, maybe. That's fine. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to use this bar and raise it a little higher, maybe? Surprise, this wire st Nope, that is way too high. And also way... There we go, how about that? Nope, still too high. Still too high. If anything, it actually... Uh, if anything, it actually needs to be lower. Because there's... Mm, a little lower, maybe? Because it's actually slightly higher up, so we'll lower that a little more. There we go, that's good. Now this one does need to be raised higher, because... Well, it needs to be raised a little lower than that, actually. Go, how about that? How about that? That potentially will... Mm, a little too much. You ought to wonder where Zelna got this, um, this skill from. When did he learn how to pick locks? Good question. When did he learn? Also, we need to uh, raise that just a tiny bit higher, like that. Uh, a little lower, actually, and a little bit over this way. Like maybe that. Is that going to do the trick? Mm, may do, actually. May actually do the trick. Perhaps a little lower. It is important that we do this. We do need access to these... Uh, this room. Okay, we need to raise this one very high indeed. Like, say, that. A surprise that even manages to fit in. Also, that is a little actually too high. That is still, in fact, too high. And we also need to raise it a little as well, like that. Because we need to uh, get that back one as well. Is that sufficient? Nearly. Nearly. It needs to be a little higher. Maybe that. Is that enough? There we go! We're in! There we go. Excellent. We're in. Yeah, just take a look around, just in case there's anybody... And there Legrand is inside his cabin! You get shot! The end of the game. No, no, he's actually not in here at all. We can look at the safe. Quite important that we do. A lock, master and son. Tough to crack. If I wanted to steal the eye, I'd concentrate on getting the three keys. Mmm. Definitely. If everything goes according to plan, the first time this monster is opened will be in the museum in Cairo. Fingers crossed. Hope so. Go outside, examine the bedding. Not used by the looks of it. Neatly folded and unused. Legrand hasn't slept since we cast off, nor on the train. He's not doing very well there. Examine the enlarger. Legrand must have taken and developed the photos himself. He even made copies and enlargements. He seems to be prepared for everything, with access to more resources than a normal detective. Hmm. Fair enough. We'd examine the bathroom, find out exactly what was going on in there when we interrupted him. Hmm. Smells like chemicals. Legrand probably developed the photos in here. Hmm. There are still fragments of the syringe that the inspector broke in the sink. Why is he pushing himself like this? Even if he catches the raven, is it worth ruining his career and his health? He seems to think so. Examine the desk. It's a mess. The food hasn't even been eaten. Please files. The grand's file on the raven. Centimeters thick, but totally useless. We're not dealing with the Raven. Why can't he see that? Our man is ruthless, a bomber, and quite probably a murderer. That is a very obvious thing there. Hmm. There's nothing written on the bottle. 
I suppose it's some sort of stimulant, legal or not. The Grand has been awake for at least 30 hours straight, maybe more. And there is the pipe. This is the pipe from the cargo hold. The Grand seems to have inspected it for fingerprints. I can still make out the powder. Didn't find anything, I take it? Hmm. No. Nothing to see on the end of the pipe that the attacker held. Either he wore gloves, or he cleaned the pipe. Ooh, the bullet. Aha. That's the bullet the doctor removed from the Baroness's corpse. We need that. This file belongs in a museum. It's history. The inspector should concentrate on the present. There's a book just over there that uh, I don't think we ever get to identify. No, there is nothing more on this table. I don't think. Let's go back. There is the desk, the microscope, the photos. There we go. Let's have a look at the photos. Legrand must have taken them yesterday at the crime scene. A rough diagram of the ship. Oh. Legrand marked the Baroness's cabin. Seems like he didn't turn up anything else of note. Hmm. Shot in her sleep. She didn't feel a thing. She went to sleep and never woke up. Hmm. This photo provides an overview of the crime scene. Okay. Hmm. Yes. The bed, the blood spot. The spot on the sheet is much bigger than the one on the mattress. There's blood on the blanket as well. A lot of blood, I'd say. Hmm. Yes, that's how we found her yesterday. I think. I wasn't really myself at the time. No, you weren't. Hmm. No. Nothing suspicious. Nothing suspicious anywhere. The blanket and the sheet are gone. I guess they're in the medical center. We're gonna have to get into there at some point. There is nothing interesting here. Now. The microscope. That is interesting. A microscope. Looks like the one that Lutz Reichinger uses in his pharmacy. Just more modern. We're going to compare some bullets. Okay. Let's analyze some bullets. And we'll compare it with this bullet. Alright. Now, we need to see if they're the same well, the same from the same gun. This is another mini game. Basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the. Uh... You see that there? That's the proof. There you are. Whoever shot the Baroness also fired the shot in the cargo hold. There you what are. What could that mean? That was much quicker than I thought it might be. But there you there you go. We managed to find the proof we Both wanted. Both bullets came from the same gun. That means that whoever shot the Baroness was also in the cargo hold. But why? That fact may be important later. It probably will be. Now we need to look at this forensics box. That is what we need. A masterpiece. Forensic teams use kits like these. They're placing increasing importance on the preservation of evidence. But not in Switzerland yet. It's a small lab used to conduct simple analysis on site. Hmm. All right. What have we got here? Let's have a look. I'm sure Legrand won't mind. For a start, the sachets. What's this? Oh, how practical. A hermetically sealed cotton swab for collecting samples. I'll take it. We need one of those. A small glass bowl for mixing chemicals. Fair enough. Brushes? Half of the tools in this box will be interesting for an archaeologist as well. Actually, forensics and archaeology are really quite similar to each other. Hmm. The goal is to find out what happened, whether a few hours ago or a few centuries ago. Yeah. Ooh, shovels and scrapers. For forensics in the woods or the open country, I suppose. No use on a ship. Gloves. Fingerprints are overrated. Smart thieves wear gloves, or they make sure that there are too many fingerprints at the crime scene to check them all. Well, test tubes? I'm sure Legrand could work magic in this alchemist's lab. Me? I'm just awestruck. What about the drawer? Ah, instructions! Ooh. 
No, 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 don't finish the investigation. Aha! This is some kind of inventory list. Oh. For each chemical, it lists the chemical composition and a short comment on how to use it. And here's a list of the most important procedures. Blood detection. Fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gunshot residue. Blood. I don't have to analyze the pillow and feathers to determine whether there's gunshot residue. I can smell it. And I don't have any other clues at the moment. We will, that's the thing. Good lord. There are a lot of chemicals. Good lord. Right now, we just actually need something to analyze. And we're going to go get something. We're going to go back to um, the Baroness's cabin, and we're going to go get a swab of that blood. Or what people think is blood. There is no one around. Which is good. Imagine if someone had been around. Legrand just waiting outside. It would be just our luck. But no, no, we, we indeed did get away with that. We got away with that. Let's go. Don't mind me, Inch. We're just going to go and uh, examine the room where the Baroness died. If we can actually get it so that we can look at it. We just need to get to the door. You know, sometimes this is actually quite a challenge. Getting a, the correct... Ah, there we go. We had to actually walk away from the door to get to the door. A little counterintuitive, but we got there. We need a swab of that blood. Yes. There's a cotton swab in the paper for collecting evidence from crime scenes. Let us take a specimen. We need that specimen to check if it is or is not in fact blood. I always wanted to do that. Well, now you can, Zelna. Now you can. That should be enough. Constable Zelna, the forensics investigator. Let us move on. Now we need to go back down to that lab. Because we need to figure out what is going on with that blood. We also probably need to find out all sorts of other things, but for now we must figure out if it's blood. Yep, have a look around, Zelna. There's still no one here. The Grand is still questioning the violinist. Still questioning the violinist. <laughs> Let us go to the forensics box. Now we actually have something that we can look at. Is he looking at it from all the way over there? Let's uh, read the manual. Wasn't there something about blood samples? There was. Fingerprints. Mm -hmm, mm, gunshot residue. Blood. There we go. Mm, well, it explains how to confirm that something is blood. That's a start. You have to mix luminol and a hydrogen peroxide solution and then drip or spray the mixture on the blood. The solution turns blue and glows even if there's just a very small amount of blood. Okay then, luminol and hydrogen peroxide. Right, first thing we need to do is put the... luminol and hydrogen peroxide. A small glass bowl for mixing chemicals. Do something with the no luminol and hydrogen peroxide. Okay, that is a uh, ah. Pour the luminol into the bowl. Aha, luminol. Nice. There we go. And hydrogen peroxide. Where is it? Oh no, I think at this point we uh, use the solution on the cotton swab. No. It said that you have to drip or spray the test solution on the evidence. Ah, pipette. Take the no. liquid. I had better mix the solution in the bowl rather than in the pipette. Okay, we need the hydrogen peroxide. There it is. And there's the hydrogen peroxide. Fair enough. I'll mix it with the luminol in the bowl. And now, now. Okay. We... I can detect blood with this mixture. The clear solution turns blue if it comes into contact with blood. So now we use the pipette. Take the okay. liquid. I am filling the pipette and putting it down very carefully. And now, 
we use the pipette on the swab. Now we're going to find out if it's blood or not. So, let's see what we have here. Indeed. No blood. Oh. Not the slightest reaction. If I didn't make a mistake, and it wasn't that difficult, then the spot on the Baroness's bed isn't really blood. But if it isn't blood, what is it? And more importantly, why didn't Dr. Gebhardt notice anything? He was supposed to have examined everything. Hmm. I'd say it's time to visit the medical center. I'd say it is as well, Zelna. When we come back, folks. Zelna is apparently turning in a circle. And we shall go to the medical center. I'll catch you then. See you later. Later.